Today, we're going to paint a rose using value dabs, and this is in preparation for peony time, which is coming up soon. Let's get started. All right, here are the value dabs, which we're going to have at the end of the painting. Prior to the painting, I don't do this, but what I do do is I put in uh, a light column, a medium column, and a dark column. And when I mix colors, I'm going to make sure that they fit in one of those columns. And I'm going to be strategic about how I decide to paint this thing. So, uh, like I said, I don't know ahead of time what colors I'm going to use, but what I am aware of is my darks, my mediums, and my lights. And typically what happens in my painting is most of my paintings are medium tones. And most of the time when you're looking around in the world, you're going to see medium tones. One of the big reasons that people come to me when they're having trouble with their painting as the um, watercolor coach is that most people sort of stay in that medium range. In other words, that medium column. Even if they mix a green or a purple or any other color, typically what happens is most people end up matching color to what they see in a photograph and they tend to stay in that middle column. And in order to make something look like it has volume or mass, you have to have lights, mediums, and darks. And so to some degree you have to artificially push that if you have to, especially in a form that is all basically one color. So I'll say it again. In order to make a painting that is uh, more viable and has the kind of pop that you want, you want to be able to have uh, darks, mediums, and lights. So you got to push out of that medium column. So that's what we're going to demonstrate here. Now the next thing coming up is going to be a photograph of the rose that I painted. And you can screen capture that rose and paint it if you want to as well. So, and this is also for practice because the month of um, May, which is coming up soon, is going to be painting peonies. Now peonies are very similar to roses, but they're not as cone shaped and their petals are not rounded. Their petals tend to be jagged and their shapes tend to be kind of like platters. So, but to some degree, there's a lot of similarities between roses and peonies. I mean, rose forms in general, um, you can make some generalities about the, the shapes and forms. All right, so here comes the photograph. All right, so like, like I said, here's, here's the photograph and, and you can use it and you can crop it any way that you want to. Uh, I like to look at overall forms of things, not individual petals, and I like to use as few strokes as possible. And so that's what we're, we're going to do as we paint this rose as a demo. But, you know, you do you. You do the way you want to do it. All right, so we'll, we'll get started here. The first thing that I do is I put in my lightest lights. I don't use masking fluid. What I use instead is Naples Yellow, watered down to some extent. And I'm using my finger to guide me so I can see exactly where I want my lights to remain. I do leave a few white to the paper, but not many. The reason I don't use masking fluid is I'm kind of clumsy with it. And also, um, I, I tend to, um, it tends to inhibit me. So, you do whatever you want to do, but this is what I use instead of masking fluid. So there are my lightest lights. If you look at that color dab paper, there's an L for lights, an M for medium, and a D for darks. So I've taken care of my lightest lights. And now I'm, most of the painting happens in the mid-tones, the mediums. So I'm mixing up a cadmium red, an orange, a rose, um, let's see, also something else. I can't remember. Uh, but at least, And I'm going to make a dab for every single time I'm coming from a puddle of paint that I've mixed. You can see that there's orange going on there, along with alizarin crimson, a little bit of rose. So I've got three mid-tones right now. I can do this because I've got a big mass, that big mass of the flowers, mostly mid-tones. But I don't want to use one color to do that because it's made up of lots of colors. But all of those colors have to be mid-tones. So the only rule in step number two is that everything has to be darker than it was in step one. So I'm checking by squinting my eyes. I can see that everything is darker than it was in the light column. Even that orange is slightly darker, so that can be considered a mid-tone. Anything darker than the white or that Naples yellow I put in at the beginning is a mid-tone. So I'm using many colors to cover up all, that, um, all those different spaces 
or I shouldn't say spaces, I should really say shapes, because I look at shapes and I decide what colors I want to put into those shapes. That's why when I say um, mix for color, mass for value, I'm looking at those masses and I'm plugging my colors into those masses, and those masses right now are all mid-tones. I'm using, like I said, as few strokes as possible. It's a size 16 flat brush. The paper is an Arsh. Um, what is it? It's, it's not the smooth paper. It's um, cold press. <laughs> I can't believe I couldn't remember that. Uh, or what I like to call the green pad. The painting is um, about an 8 by 8 inch uh, square. I love to paint in a square, but that's me. I'm also making sure that the paint is quite thick. Sometimes going, um, taking paint directly from the tube. The color is never going to be darker than it is directly from the tube. So I'm safely in the mid-tones. You see I have one, two, three, four, oh, I don't know, maybe six mid-tones going on here. Um, I think I dried it with a hair dryer. But yeah, good, I did. Now I've got to put in some darks. Now there aren't many darks, but they're really important, and where they are is important. So I'm using my finger to guide me. I made sure to mix up a dark with alizarin crimson and just a little bit of ultramarine blue. I need the ultramarine blue because only if I use something from the cool side of the color wheel am I going to be able to get into the darker range, which I need to do in order for this uh, form to look like it has some depth. And the reason why many people will come to me for lessons, or used to before the pandemic anyway, was because they would come and mostly stayed in the mid-tones. Even if they were mixing up a green or they were mixing up a purple, they would still stay within the mid-tones. And what you really need in order to get depth in your painting is you need darks, mediums, and lights. And that has to be relative to each other. So even though most of a painting can be mid-toned, if you don't make some of the lights lighter than that mid-tone and some of the darks darker than that mid-tone, you end up with a painting that's probably accurate and probably really matches the photograph that you have, but it's not going to have the depth or the um, what do you know, brightness of color that you want. So you have to sort of exaggerate and overcompensate for that. And this is kind of my method I developed, this sort of color dab method that is very systematic and, and reminds me as I go that everything's relative to everything else. And I better be able to have some, a lot in the middle column, at least something on the, in the dark column and something in the light column, because if I don't, then the overall painting is just not going to, um, just not going to, going to uh, succeed. Now, if you have an all red rose, which this is, although it's composed of oranges and, and many other colors, is it, it makes a lot of sense to put some green behind it. I'm not looking at making any kind of um, petals or anything like that, but you know, green is the complement to red, and so it, it just it usually works nicely. And, and you learn that when you paint a lot of flowers. So this is all being done in preparation for peony month, which is coming up soon. Now, a peony is a little bit different than, oh, I should have made a dab for this. this. This is my darkest dark now. I think I will before it ends. I think I do make a dab in that column. But I went just one little bit darker. That's what usually happens in final adjustments. You realize that you haven't quite taken the color range as far as you need to. So what I was going to say is that um, I'm going to paint a lot of peonies and, and give you a lot of um, peony references in the month of um, May, which is coming up. And peonies are very similar to roses, but roses are have more of a cone shape and they have round petals and peonies tend to be uh, jagged at the edge of their petals and they're also more like a platter. But there's lots of similarities. So this is a good time to sort of get practiced up. And there you can see the painting, which, um, you know, when you pull back, as I'm, I'm a little bit further away, it looks like it has more volume than, than when you're right on top of it. You can see the color dabs, I took care of business there, and the reference photo. So I hope that's helpful. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mats for value, mix for color, and please join my YouTube channel. Or if you haven't subscribed and you're watching this, please subscribe because at least 60% of you haven't subscribed yet. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.